Salutations, everyone, and welcome to What Mattered, the show where I tell you what mattered in the news this week. Mass Effect Andromeda comes out on Tuesday, and that means you had a good run at being the best game of the year, but uh, sadly, your reign only lasted a few weeks. <laughs> So yes, Mass Effect Andromeda doesn't come out for a couple of days, but it's already making headlines because people have been able to play it early via EA Early Access on the Xbox One and the PC, where you can play the first two missions of the game for up to 10 hours. You can also split that time with the full entirety of the multiplayer, which is I'm spending all of my time in my Early Access 10 hours. Now, there has been a lot of talk about the facial animations and now the walking animations of the game ever since it was first shown when we first got to see Sarah Ryder with some less than human looking characteristics when it came to showing emotion via the face. Now, it doesn't seem to have changed really very much um, since we first saw that where you know, before then we could say, you know, this is very, very, you know, pre-alpha kind of days. And, you know, there's a lot of things that are going to be tweaked and finished and polished and changed and stuff like that. Um, and the day one patch already came out when the EA Early Access went live for most people. And there is going to be another day one patch when Tuesday comes out, but the animation will not be addressed where people are citing some bugs when it comes to squad mates, you know, just T-posing all over the place. Um, it doesn't seem to be like hugely, you know, glitched like we've seen other big AAA launches the past few years, like, you know, The Division or Assassin's Creed Unity or other Ubisoft titles that you may have heard of, as well as, you know, a couple of other games out there. Let's be fair. Um, so it's not like super glitchy in that way or like game breaking, but people are just saying that the facial animations, they just look robotic. They don't look human, uncanny valley, some really weird walking animations in, you know, cutscenes as well as in gameplay, which is a little unexcusable. And so, yeah, I've seen these GIFs and these, you know, bits out there. Um, I haven't gone into spoiler territory and I will not have spoilers on this channel or my Twitch channel for quite some time because I'm going to be A, focusing on multiplayer and B, I want to give everybody the chance to play the game spoiler free. So... Yeah, though they definitely are problems. I am a huge Mass Effect fan, as many of you may know. I've been streaming it almost weekly on my Twitch channel for over three years now. So yeah, I'd, I'd say I'm a pretty big fan of the franchise, as you could duly tell. But some of these things are kind of difficult to defend. Now, when it comes to the multiplayer, it's amazing. That's where I've spent all my time, and I still work on spend most of my time where I had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours in the multiplayer Mass Effect 3 and then Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer looks even better fixing a lot of the issues including you know the Omni button and now there's no global cooldown and there's a lot of you know new powers and new synergies everything primes for every detonator and it's it's fantastic there you know we have three factions to play against and they all provide their own challenges which is super duper cool tech explosions are now on par if not better than biot explosions in some senses and the game seems to be very very really well done i'm just gonna say it's really really well done uh when it comes to the multiplayer they fixed pretty much every single problem that the mass effect 3 multiplayer had and i still think that that's the best multiplayer that's ever been made uh, regardless of PvP or PvE, and I'm really looking forward to looking into uh, playing more than 10 hours of Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer and the campaign as well. But they said that there are other patches that will be coming out, but these are animations that we are going to be stuck with for a while, and it is a bit embarrassing. Some people say that, you know, this game was rushed. There were some rumors, you know, as early as, you know, eight or nine weeks ago that said that this could be pushed back five months and maybe they shouldn't have had the campaign be part of the early access even though that is the main uh you know driving point for most mass effect fans since a lot of them wouldn't even know that mass effect 3 had a multiplayer uh, but regardless andromeda is still gonna be a good game and still gonna be a ton of fun and worth all your money believe me Sonic Mania has been pushed back from a spring release to a summer release, and we finally have a title as well as some footage of the Sonic 2017 game, now called Sonic Forces, 
which uh, has you know a very very small bit of you know what we assume is gameplay it definitely looks like gameplay it doesn't look like a pre-rendered graphic cinematic or anything like that and people are all over the board sometimes everyone's happy that there is a sonic game because they love sonic because he has 10,000 different iterations, but with all those different iterations, there's it's hard to please more than one of those, you know, fan bases, whether it be people that only like 2D Sonic or they, you know, they grew up liking 3D Sonic and sometimes, you know, those don't age super well. And then Sonic Boom was just a glitchy, terrible disaster. And Sonic Colors was pretty good. Sonic Generations was really good and it had a mix of 2D and 3D and it was like made for speed running and super really awesome in every single way. But my personal favorite, Sonic Adventure 2 I, is like the pinnacle of Sonic games for me. I know that puts me in a minority, um, but I just I feel like that's one of the best video games ever made um, and, and just in so many ways and no other Sonic has even come close to attempting that kind of gameplay, uh, let alone having that good of an end result. But that's just my personal opinion. Some people really like Sonic Colors, you know, some people really liked Generations, some people really liked Sonic Heroes, which I thought was pretty decent, even though it was a super short game. And some people only like, you know, Sonics 1, 2, and 3. And then there's the Sonic Racers and the Sonic Dashers and Sonic All-Star Sega, Sega Racing people. So a ton of people are super upset whenever a new Sonic game comes out and it's not the kind that they like. But it is 3D. It seems more similar to the 3D Sonic games that have gotten mostly positive, or at least more positive reviews than, say, Sonic, you know, and the Black Knight or Sonic Unleashed or... You know, those Sonics. So let's hope it's really good and can please the people that it's trying to please. Because when it comes to Sonic, some people are always going to be pleased because it's Sonic. And then some people will never be pleased because it's Sonic. Now, there has been a lot of talk this past week about a possible new Matrix movie that would be a reboot to the series, not a remake. There is going to be no Neo in a supposed next Matrix movie. It's gonna be set within the Matrix universe, much like the Animatrix, which is technically the best reviewed of any of the Matrix films, even though it's an anthology of different short stories in animation. But a sequel or a reboot or a, a re-brequel, whatever weird things that people like to call these kinds of movies, will just be a revitalization into a universe that we're already familiar with, with different characters in different storylines. There's been all kinds of things about supposed directors and people talking about not wanting to get into this franchise and some people are already angry which is ridiculous because like this isn't even a project that's started to get off the ground or, or for all we know isn't in pre-production but the idea is out there. Maybe there's scripts floating around or at least trying to get a director on board or a writer or and a director and producers on board but regardless someone is looking into there being a Rape Matrix reboot and hey there's there's been at least one good Matrix something that we've all seen so let's just hope it's 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 more like that but with brand new characters which will help us you know forget about mistakes that might have been made in other Matrix films. Fire Emblem Heroes, the mobile game for all you Fire Emblem fans out there, have been treated to a free three-star Corrin if you are on Android. Don't know if that's going to be coming to iOS later or if it's just for Android users, but she's pretty cute and she's a dragon and she's awesome and she's, you know, a nice free three-star to train up. And there is a new feature that has added to the Fire Emblem Heroes discussion and the meta, and that is Inheritance of Skills, which is nothing new to Fire Emblem fans when pairing up their characters to try to pass down the best abilities. But this, of course, there's no marriage uh, structure in this little mobile uh, game. So the way of inheriting people would just be, you know, cannibalizing those characters and extracting their power to a different character. Now, on one hand, this is going to enable some characters that weren't super duper viable before, but maybe you have an attachment to for one reason or another, you just like the way they look, or you want a good spear character and you don't have one, but you have all these good, you know, swords or dragons or, or mages or, or ninjas, you know, so you can do more of what you like and being able to utilize 
the things that you do have but not necessarily want to use and obviously if you're paying to play on the gotcha system then you can really abuse this to make an amazing team but of course when it comes to a game that has a pvp element even though it's not technically pvp because you aren't fighting the same people at the same time but their team essentially is already bogged down with some balance issues with Takumi's being everywhere, so this would just compound on those problems. So a ton of people are hating it because the, the game's already not super duper balanced and this would make it even less so because you can make even more characters completely unstoppable and being to counter attack at all ranges. So some good and some bad, but at least the game continues to get additional content new summons you know almost weekly as well as you know some new missions that we can do to get more orbs and uh, that's been pretty good i've only gotten three four stars thus far still waiting on you know a lucina but uh it's it's a fun game and it continues to hold my interest and this sort of thing doesn't really bother the ma me that much but i'm not Part of the hardcore fan base so take that as you will what does a certain magical index and virtual on have in common besides being two franchises that i really enjoy i've really liked the games from virtual on from the arcade machines to my ps2 and i've really liked the certain magical index anime series and they are coming together to make a new game in 2018. Now, apparently, unbeknownst to myself and probably a few of you out there, there was a certain magical virtual on visual novel crossover last year, and now it's getting a game adaptation, which is one of the weirder crossovers that I would, I mean, I don't know what I would think virtual on would cross over with, but I'm just happy there's gonna be a new virtual on game that we haven't seen since the, you know, Virtual on Mars came out on the PS2 and that eventually got like a digital port for 360 and PS3 So I'm happy about more virtual on game because I love those games and I'm you know from what I can remember I was pretty decent at it and I really like certain magical index characters So it's kind of weird, but there's already been established visual novels crossing the two over I maybe I should read them now because these are two things that I really like Weird that they're crossing over, but I'm excited. Most likely just coming to like maybe PS4 or PS Vita. We won't probably know those details for a while, but uh, I'm excited. <laughs> Anywho, that is what mattered this week. If you'd like to know what matters in the future, hit the subscribe button when these videos comes out every single Saturday. Follow me on Twitter. Let me know what you guys thought about this week in the news in the comments section below. And I'll catch you all later.